Hi everybody, my name is Sarah Beth, and today I just finished reading The Good Soldier Svek by Jaroslav Hasek. This is actually a translation from the original Czech done by Cecil Perot. Please forgive me if I mispronounced any of those names. They are all Czech related and it is not my native language. This novel was published serially between the years of 1921 to 1923. There are four different volumes included, and it comes out to around 750 pages. So it's a bit of an undertaking if you want to read it all at once. But if you want to read it serially, I think that's the way you should have read it. Initially, actually, the author meant to publish six different volumes about his soldier spec. But unfortunately, he passed on around the age of 40 due to, you know, illness complications. So at the last page of the book, it actually talks about how this is as far as the author got before he became ill and passed on. And all I can say is that this is a very funny novel. And it's really interesting because World War I was most definitely hellish. You know, you can see depictions of this in All Quiet on the Western Front. And the author was a member of the war. He fought in the Czech army and, during World War I. And he was actually a prisoner of war um, for the Russians. And so he's definitely been through a lot of, you know, starvation and strife. And I think that because of that, he was able to turn to comedy. And that's how he was able to cope with that kind of hardship. And this book is all comedic. If you're looking for something that's truly, you know, dramatized or, you know, more tugging on the heartstrings, this, this is not for you. I would say a better mix of comedy and, you know, the hardships of war would be Catch-22, which is one of my personal favorites. But this book walked so Catch-22 could run. You know, it's very much one of the first depictions of anti-war satire that was ever written. And I think that it holds its own in the, you know, place of classics. But personally, I would prefer something that's a little bit more of a mix between comedic and dramatic. Because due to its serialized nature and, you know, the different volumes, it feels very cyclical. It feels very much the story stuck in a rut. If you've read all of the Sherlock Holmes stories all at once, you'll know exactly what I mean. You get very much worn out on the story. And, you know, the comedic nuances kind of get passed over because you're very much used to them and it doesn't feel fresh because it's more of just, you know, enjoying your favorite character in a show. It's not exactly moving a definitive plot forward. I mean, the book ends essentially with a nothing ending. And that's maybe because the author died and he expected to finish it off more on a strong note, but there's no real point in the novel where you say, okay, this is complete. I've seen the beginning and the end. There's been a story arc. There's been a character arc. Something has occurred. It all just kind of jumbles together, you know, with movements through the army. There are some really notable points in the novel, which are quite enjoyable. I think that the best parts are the first volume and the last volume. The in-between, it just, it feels stagnant to me. I think the first one, when you're introducing the characters and getting into the story, and you know, when you have Shvek trying to go into the army and he's got rheumatism and he's just in a wheelchair trying to go to the medical camp, like, take me, I want to join, you know, full of patriotism, but he's an absolute imbecile. The whole novel, you just know that Shvek is an imbecile. Something that kind of irked me in this novel is along the lines, he starts painting Svek as less of an imbecile and more of a, you know, upper officer because he does get painted to a new position. So maybe that is character development, but it did feel like a complete character shift from what he once was before because he almost becomes Tom Sawyer-like and not wanting to complete things, but yet still has, you know, imbecile more moments. And then they changed the, you know, new imbecile to... Uh, a Bollum, I believe his name is pronounced, but who's a new, um, basically gluttonous pig for the author to pick on instead of Svek. So I do feel like all of a sudden there was a huge character shift between volumes. It just was not consistent and it bothered me a little, but then it, he stays that way for the rest of the volumes. So, you know, you kind of let it go. 
I do think that the last volume is kind of a return to that, you know, idiotic nature because Feck does get taken prisoner by his own army. And I find that whole part hilarious. I think that the fact that he was able to not get, you know, court-martialed and hung is fantastical. It's just bonkers. And I wish there was just a little bit more of, you know, the truce of war in this. I mean, I think the main purpose of this novel, and it served that purpose, was to show that the war, World War I, was not for the people. It was for, you know, the monarchy. It was for, not for the motherland, but for the specific people up top that were controlling the masses. It was not to help the actual population. And you have people like Schweck, who's completely devoted and, you know, a true patriot. And he just kind of suffers from, you know, being this kind of organization that doesn't better him and better his real values and honestly, the officers are all, they're almost as much of a buffoon as Feck. You know, they're very much dirty. They're very much incompetent. They have these petty, you know, nuisances between them. And, you know, they do a lot of debauchery. You know, they have prostitutes and they drink like sailors and they swear. And they look down upon anyone who's enlisted and not an officer. And there's this huge class divide between officer and enlisted. And you see that, you know, there are these gluttonous pigs and then you see the poor enlisted just being starved. And that's why, you know, there's this gluttonous, you know, enlisted character that becomes the new imbecile, the new pick-on character, Balum. And he kind of has to exist just because somebody's got to rebel against this. And so he just eats up all the officer's food, everything in his path. And he says, I can't help it. And most people are, you know, quite rude and mean to him saying, oh, you're going to get hung for this. You know, no good soldier would do this. But at the same time, there is a portion of the story when the enlisted men are not fed for days. <laughs> and I would say that's a lot worse than somebody trying to steal some food and fill up while he still can. You know, I think that's almost a survival instinct at that point. No one doubts that you should not steal. That's not the best course of action. However, all's fair in love and war, right? <laughs> so I would say that this is worth a read just for how much that it changed the landscape of, you know, the literary scene and what it stands for. But I do not recommend that you read it all at once. It's too much in the fact that you just won't enjoy it. It's something that you look at every once in a while, maybe read a volume, maybe even two. But if you read it all at once, you get bored of the characters and you just don't enjoy it because... It introduces that one idea, the incompetency and the bloat of the officers and the upper ranks and how it's not meant for your common man. And once you get past that, it doesn't really add much. But still a great novel. And I hope you enjoyed my review of it. Have a good day.